Welcome. It's time to talk about adaptive immunity. That's what this page is all about. And I might call it a crash course in adaptive immunity because this video, you might find one that you need to watch more than once. Okay, you ready for this? Here we go. So adaptive immunity begins when a cell like a macrophage, so it has to be a phagocytic cell. Dendritic cells can also do this. When a, when a macrophage engulfs something. So it all starts with eating. And as you've heard, a moment on the lips, forever on the hips. Well, once this macrophage eats something, in this case maybe a pathogen, parts of it are going to end up sticking all around the outside of the macrophage. So let's imagine that this actually is a pathogen. We'll do this in pink. And these aren't drawn to scale, of course. Remember, this is my simplistic take on this. This pathogen could be a bacterial cell. It could be uh, a, a cell that it has a virus inside of it. It could be a protist or uh, it could be a helminth. So the first thing that happens is the pathogen is engulfed. Actually, I think I'm going to use purple for this. The pathogen is engulfed and the antigens are presented to a T cell. And one thing that's kind of funny about this is it's like when your cat catches something outside and brings it up to your porch. And you might not think much of that, but the cat's trying to do you an honor. Well, this macrophage is going to present little bits of that eaten pathogen all over its body. So you can take your, um, we'll first use a yellow highlighter to, for this arrow, and then a blue highlighter for the macrophage. And then let's put some pieces of this pathogen um, on the outside of the macrophage. So maybe here would be a, a chunk of it, and we call that chunk an antigen. Maybe here is a chunk, we call that chunk an antigen. Here is another chunk called an antigen. Usually antigens are proteins, but they aren't always. Our body tends to perform adaptive immunity best when the antigens are proteins, but we're able to do them a little bit to cell walls, but not as effectively in general. Of course, some of that pathogen is still inside the macrophage. Okay, so this is the T cell. You can highlight that in yellow. The macrophage has presented the antigens on its surface, and lo and behold, one of those antigens happens to match the one antigen in the world that this helper T cell can recognize. So let's use um, a black for, this is, this helper T cell is able to match here with um, a structure called a CD4 protein. It's kind of like winning the lottery because each helper T cell in your body can only rec recognize one antigen in the whole world. And that's so important, we're going to write that down. in the whole world. So you can think of a few 
in my mind now, there's a whole bunch of different implications buzzing around. One would be if I look at this pathogen, the only antigen that that helper T cell can recognize is this one. But maybe you have another type of helper T cell in your body that can recognize this one, and another that could recognize this one, and another that could recognize this one. So you actually could have a variety of helper T cells responding to the same pathogen, even though individually they can only recognize one. Another implication that right away kind of bumps into my mind is what if you have helper T cells that recognize antigens that aren't actually part of a pathogen? If that happens, do you know what we call that? If you guessed allergy or autoimmunity, you are correct. That's what happens with allergies and autoimmunity is that we have helper T cells inappropriately recognizing antigens. Okay, so, um, oh, and then a third implication that bumped into my head was that what if you don't have a single helper T cell to recognize any of these antigens? If that happens, then it could be that you're unable to develop immunity to that particular pathogen. So maybe we'll put all three of those implications up here. So one is that multiple T cells could respond to different antigens, oops, sorry, on a particular pathogen. And a second implication is that response to non-pathogen is going to be an allergy if it's something in your um, environment or an autoimmunity if it's something inside of you. Either one can cause problems. Okay, so um, I wanted to mention about the CD4 cells. So these are called um, CD4 cells or helper T helper T cell, also known as CD4 due to this docking protein that they have here that helps them connect to the macrophage when they match up their, um, match up with the antigen. And then can't really talk about helper T cells without mentioning that these are the cells that are infected in HIV. So HIV infects these cells And um, in the development of full-blown AIDS, what happens is these cells start to die off. And so the CD4 count goes lower and lower. And if you don't have enough of these cells, you're not going to be able to develop adaptive immunity to the pathogens in your environment. And that's why um, HIV ends up, or AIDS ends up killing people because they're immunocompromised. Okay, so now this helper T cell is going to become activated. And once, once it has um, attached to that, matched to that antigen. So the first thing it will do is rapidly divide. So the activated cell rapidly divides. to make an army of responders. So each one of these helper T cells is a clone of the first one. So they're all going to recognize the very same antigen. They're ready to fight. And they're going to basically do three things. And we're gonna take a look at those uh, three things that they can cause happen. So the first, you can maybe tell by these arrows I have here, activated helper T cells will release chemicals that stimulate macrophages to be even more ravenous than normal and to keep eating up anything unusual that they find. 
This, these chemicals will also stimulate basically all of your inflammatory cells to make more inflammation, which will ideally bring more white blood cells to the location of infection. So all of these are inflammatory cells. And the first thing that I'm going to tell you about then that these activated helper T cells do is enhance activity of all immune cells. So you might remember that there are some kinds of white blood cells that have reddish, that stain with reddish granules. Those are eosinophils. You might also remember that there are, so I used, a, I used pink dots for that. Then you might remember that basophils, their granules stain purple, and that neutrophils have multi-lobed nuclei. But the point is, is that these are all inflammatory type cells and they're all going to become more active when they are stimulated by helper T cells. The stimulation is generally in the form of different kinds of cytokines, these chemicals that boss other cells around. Okay, so that's been over 11 minutes. We're gonna take a break and we'll come back in part two.